But because I've been so busy um, over the last six weeks, it's been hard for me to do but, some of Oh, okay. Because I'm streaming so on busy. Facebook, I need to. Six weeks, it's been hard for me to do some. To mute it over here. Oh, okay, because. Mute! Great. Uh, anyway, so I think that the content from today. We will see. I, ideally, the content today I can use as one of the class sessions for the finance course, but that will depend upon specificity. I have to be sure that that this is this is honestly useful. And so, the more questions you have about the process and um, and what it is that we're doing, the easier it is for me to be to answer those things and be certain that the answers are of real value. If they're really valuable to you then I may conclude that they will also be valuable to the students. But that's that's the most important thing, that it, it's not even the money people spend. It ain't that much money, it's $37 a month. But the time and the energy and the faith that you're extending to me, that I take seriously. You know, I could give you the money back, but I can't give you back your time and your energy. So uh, I, I feel a, a really deep obligation to be very sure that if you trust me, if you if you say to yourself, let Steve seems to be telling us the truth about his perspective, and I I would kind of like some of the results that he seems to be getting and that his students seem to be getting, let me trust him for six weeks. Anybody who says that to me, I have a sacred obligation to them. And I I will break my back to be sure that if you trust me. What you're really doing is learning to trust your own instinct, because because trusting your own inst learning to trust your own instinct is a beautiful thing. When you can get in touch with that little voice inside you that says "do this" or "don't do this," and it works out, you start trusting yourself more. If you trust yourself, if you go, if you get into a relationship, or you 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 go on a path following a voice inside you and it doesn't work out, you trust your instincts less. But if you start to do something and the voice inside you says, don't do this, and you did it anyway, you will trust yourself less as a human being. And that is a painful thing. So I want you to challenge me. I want you to push me. I want you to ask me the hardest questions that you can uh, and if I cannot answer them, I do not deserve your trust. It's as simple as that. I expect you to be adults about this, not trusting children. God, I love kids. But adults <laughs> have to take another, another step along the process. So let's get started, shall we? Um, in Tananarive, please keep letting people in. We have all these wonderful people. Here today, some names I have not seen before, and I would like to start this by saying, welcome to Fire Dance. My name is Stephen Barnes. I am the creator of the Fire Dance technologies, the life writing technologies. I'm a writer, novelist, television writer, martial artist, and most importantly, husband and father. There is nothing more important to me than my family. I adore my family. I love being a dad. I love being married to this challenging woman in my life. She makes me a better man. You know, I, I, there's this expression that from time to time, life gives you a cubic inch of opportunity. And if you grab it, you've got it. And if you let it go by, it's gone forever. Well, I can promise you that I can identify about 12 different moments in my life where there was an instinct that this was, this was a turning point. Maybe not even 12. I mean, I could probably boil it down to about six that were really massive, you know, but let's, let's say, let's say 12. And Tanana Reeve is definitely one of them. My good lady wife, are you ready to show yourself on camera, sweetheart? Are you still laying back? I think I just got ready. <laughs> so let me turn my camera on. One second. There it is. Hello, everybody. Hi, sweetheart. So yeah, let me go ahead and pin your image and pin my image so that we're both, no, spotlight. That's what I want, spotlight, not pin. There you go. 
And there we go. Yeah. yeah Great. Good. Yes. Really good. Really good. So would everybody unmute yourselves and just say hi. Just say hi to each other. It's just like pretend we're in a room together. Hello, hi, everybody. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Please Hello. Please do that in gallery view, Steve. Hope you're having good weather. Absolutely. I hope that the week has been great. I hope that you're actually testing these things. You know, what, what, we're, what we're doing is there is a hypothesis that organizing your mind and energy in a particular way can make you more efficient and effective so that you can achieve your life goals. And I personally think that I agree with the Dalai Lama that the meaning of life is to be joyful and of service. So increasing your capacity to be joyful, increasing your capacity to serve others strikes me as being a very valid path in life. Um, so the idea that a morning ritual of action, thought, and emotion brings together everything you are for a short period of time, just 10 to 20 minutes every morning. And that if you do that, you will improve the results you get for the rest of the day. So that's that's the hypothesis. Um, I have tested it in my own life and with hundreds of students to one way or another uh, for years at this point, I get paid a lot of money to do this. And it is my joy to give this to you during these broadcasts for free. Uh, and I also invite you to join the fire dance program uh, www.firedancetaichi.com so I can take you deeper in there. But the fact is, all I really want is for you to thrive. So I will give you and teach you anything I can. Ask me anything you want during this period of time. There is nothing I will not address. In fact, I cannot think of a single question anybody has ever asked that I felt like they should not have asked. There have been a couple questions I decided not to answer. Some specificity about my finances, for instance. You know, I, there, there, there are things that I don't go into too deeply, but I will give you the broad idea about anything that you want. So please understand for this time to work for you, we have to share. So what I like to start with is um, the idea is that the that the morning ritual uses the Wu style 108 Tai Chi Tuan form, which is a multi joint uh, pattern of movement, thought and focus and breathing that brings us all together at one time. The energy system inside Tai Chi is called Qigong. And the Qigong exercises can be extracted from the Tai Chi and practice separately. You can practice them to help you go to sleep. You know, that that, that flow state thing that works, let's say, when people talk about uh, being uh, having writer's block. Writer's block is a confusion of two different states of mind. The flow state, where you are entering into flow and, and gushing ideas, and the editor mode, where you are evaluating the quality of your output. Those are not the same things, and you must keep them separate if you have writer's block. If you are blocked in any way, and, and being blocked means unable to do it, take any of the steps that lead you to having a successful career. You know, whether it's writing, finishing, submitting, researching, editing, you know, uh, sit, accepting rejection, putting the story back out, you know, in the, whatever it is, once you have defined the steps to being the person you want to be, and you should break them down. So it's about five steps. If that's not sufficient specificity, you take a step and you break that down into five sub steps. So that you can see what the process is between where you are and where you want to be in life. For me, that was, I, there were three things that I wanted. I wanted uh, martial arts mastery, I wanted a writing career, and I wanted a family to love. So the questions for me are, who do I have to be to be the kind of person who can have those three things simultaneously? It's going to cost you. I mean, there are going to be a bunch of things that you're not going to be able to do because you're going to be putting your attention into the things that you decided were most important. But if you choose those things properly, it's okay. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's okay. I, I would be willing to settle for just those three things because if I had to, I can't think of, of three other things 
that I should have. I mean, ideally, I would like to have more things. I'd like to, to grow more spiritually. I would like to do this. I'd like to do that. But the root of all those things, as far as I can determine, is found in those three things. I mean, the, 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 those three things contain the root of growth in other arenas. In other words, the, my spirituality can be measured in the way I treat other human beings, especially the human beings who are closest to me. If I think that I'm spiritual, but I am not loving, I cannot accept stress. You know, I try to control people. I hurt people. Any of those things, you can forget how much supposed spirituality I have. That if I am not caring for God's creatures, if I am not in the flow of whatever the life energy of the universe is, however I define those things, those things should manifest in the way I make money. Am I providing legal, positive goods and services to my community so that they can then reward me with money? Do I have enough respect for myself to be sure that I am rewarded for the effort that I, that I do, um, the, the, the efforts that I take? So whatever I say that you should have at least one goal, at least each of those three major areas, something with your body, something with your finances, your mind, and something with your heart, your emotions. For me, that's relationships with others, especially an intimate relationship. It's my writing career, you know, money and, and personal satisfaction. And it's my martial arts, which requires my body be healthy and so forth and so on. You know, I have passed the point in my life where I'm going to, I'm going to tournaments or looking to prove myself with fighting and so forth and so on. But I still want to get better in certain ways. I still want to get better at teaching in certain ways. So in all three of these arenas, I want to be a better husband and father. I want to be a better teacher. I want to be a better writer, a better martial artist. And all those things are saying are in service to what we were talking about the last couple of weeks, the golden man. You know, do I, when I visualize the very best version of myself, who is the martial arts master, the wonderful father, the ecstatic husband, the dynamite world-class writer if i can visualize that guy then i can imagine well what is it that that guy does every day how does he feel how does he think how does he walk and i try to step into that and what i have found is that the more i do that the better my results get i that is my hypothesis it is now a theory you know the scientific method says you observe a phenomenon you postulate an, uh, something that would explain the phenomenon. You formulate an experiment to test your hypothesis, perform the experiment. If you get the result you thought you'd get, you write it up you, you, and you, you promote it. You tell other people about it. You let them perform the same experiment. So we have this thing called the fire dance theory. And each and every one of you is a scientist who is experimenting with aspects of it and reporting back to me what you're getting. So the more you report back to me, the easier it is for me to help you. So before I go into like a little, little qigong to get us warmed up today, any comments, questions, or requests uh, about anything that we have covered up until this point, um, you know, just uh, just how can I serve you? You know, just if, if I if I want. Oh yes, Jaime. Yeah, hi everybody. Gosh, I'm so glad to be here this week. I missed you so much last week. So. Oh, we missed you too, buddy. I've been in this sort of life situation for about a month that just ended this week that is sort of a miniature dark night of the soul that required me to be, for my own daily practice, doing the minimum just to get by. Yes. And that has finally opened up. And what I'm noticing in that is uh, facing and pushing through my level of discomfort. For example, never letting the pain go beyond three. Yes. Right. And being hold on for just a second because I want to be. I want to to uh, honor what you just said. Um, your pain should never go above a three on a scale of one to ten. What right. you aim for is a level of elegance in action that is a seven or above. If your pain stays below a three and your excellence, your form, in other words, stays above a seven, then you can push your intensity up above a six. 
So what you're looking for is to whatever the rules are, the guard in physical activities, the kinesthetic template, the, the, um, the form of the movement are your safety rails. They keep you from tearing your body apart. So if your form is good, then you can take a lot of intensity. But, and there will be analogs to that in intellectual and emotional activities as well. However, please, Jaime, go ahead. So you already partially this business of, oh, having that amping up intensity for separate experience already helps. Um, what I'm finding is the, you know, if I'm just doing regular practice and I'm keeping the pain level at three, that's fine. When I go through a dark night of the soul, there's no backing off at three. You just have to endure through whatever is happening because that's the point of a dark night of the soul. And then once it's over, and now I'm, I'm at the stage of getting back into my own regular practice, um, those two different levels of being under some control of the intensity versus just surviving the intensity and getting back into my practice. I did a, a, a breathing yoga exercise this morning to try to increase things. And I hit that wall that like wiped me out. And I sat there trying to think, okay, I don't want to experience this as unpleasantness because then it's going to discourage me from showing up and pushing through again but sure. i need to keep improving in this area so that's the sort of dilemma that i'm in that i'm i would appreciate help with okay so your situation is fairly clear and you actually seem to understand where you are so how can i help you specifically um I think it's the difference between confidence, which is based on a belief, versus clarity, which is based on understanding. Okay, so what you need is faith, which is based on a sense that you are a child of the universe and you deserve to be here. Okay. okay. So at some level, sometimes we don't have clarity. Sometimes we don't know what we're supposed to do. And then what we have to have, and the, the, the hero's journey tells us that the way through the dark night of the soul is faith. Okay, and it is faith, faith in one of three faith. things. Faith in, power. Yes, that's faith. right. Faith in yourself, that there lies within you somewhere, the capacity to do the thing, and that if you can hold in your mind and heart over time a belief that you can do this, you can accomplish it. You can find a way to make it happen. That, that belief, or at the very worst, that if you give it everything you've got and you don't get it, you're still going to be fine. You will learn all sorts of different things, and you will have been true to yourself. Thank you know, the you. outside universe, you know, you, I could get hit by a meteor tomorrow. There is no way I can guarantee any level of external success. What I can do is do everything I can to be myself every day, to be true to what my mother wanted for me, my father, my mentors, what my son needs for me, my daughter, my wife, and what that little boy inside me who started the journey of life wanted when he looked out at the world and wondered, is there a place for me? So. So that's the me thing. Then it's your companions, which is mentors and allies. And this group, I bet you that if you could clearly phrase any desire, anything that you needed, we could brainstorm with you and, and help you find a way to do it. You know, and then let's say the universe that that we, you know, the, you're a, in one way you're a lily of the field. You know, they they toil not, neither do they spin. But what we're saying is that they actually are toiling. They're converting, you know, soil and air into materials and so forth. So they're doing photosynthesis. They're giving to bees. They're giving, you know, when they die, they, their their bodies go into the soil and 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 help to continue the cycle of life. We're part of the cycle of life, just like any flower. So to believe that if you do the best you can, if you give the best you can at this moment to believe that just maybe you're enough. Oh. Just maybe mm -hmm. you are that bitch. I mean, just, just, just maybe you are. If, if you can live in the question, have 
fun with it and set it up so that every day you win if you simply do the things you say you're going to do. The outside results are totally different. You, all you have to do is do your minimums. Do the minimums and you win that day. You win. It doesn't matter what the rest of the world says. Great. You understand me? I do. And just getting here today feels like sliding safe into home plate. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Thanks. it's we will be here every Saturday for you. I promise that I'm going to do that every Saturday this year. We will see how it goes. I love this. I mean, I, but what I can promise is we'll do it every every Saturday this year. You know, unless I'm sick out of my mind, you know, I will I will be here with you, and we will create a safe space for you to be able to to take the chances that will enable you to find out who you really are, so that you can have that joy and service. Okay. Thanks. My pleasure, Tish. Oh. Tish? There we go. Hey. Yeah. Hey there. There you go. Hey there. Hi um, there. As welcome as can be. Thank you. And so I've jumped in and out of your programs from the Enneagrams. Remember when we did those a while ago <laughs> with your buddy? Yes. And then the Warrior and then the Fire Dance. And I, um, so, and, and I'm I've just. I've tried coming... a lot of different ways to communicate this thing. And I suddenly realized that what's necessary is, is verbal, written, visual and anchoring it in the physical body and then being with you live yeah as, as, as live as i possibly can I, I think i finally figured this out so this is this oh is zoom sorry zoom's changed everything a few years yeah, ago absolutely so absolutely my so my question is um and and it isn't a philosophical one it's that um i actually do pay you guys every month for something <laughs> i've got yeah. clickbank shows me that i pay you um and and is so is that because I know I get these these emails from you a lot. So is that this fire dance program or is that something no, the fire else? dance program is specific for it's the Tai Chi program. Okay, you're probably in the life writing program. If you're not writing, then kind of what I would suggest you do is to I am writing program so. and get over on the fire dance because we're going to give you a lot of the same. The, in other words, it's fire dance is not about writing. But it's a perfect okay. program for writers because it was created by a writer to deal with the issues I have in my life. So whether or not you're interested in writing, Fire Dance will do it. So what we're doing is Fire Dance is the beginning point. Then we will have versions of it about parenting. We're 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 so close to having that together. We actually okay. got Okay, I'm I'm past that. I'm a GG I now. Understand. Then yeah. we have <laughs> one for writing, one for different things. But the, right. the basis is a, a morning ritual, a daily ritual to take charge of your life one day right. at a time if you can give me you know a couple hours a week the theory is i can change your life or you can change your life with a couple hours right a week. and so that's the thing so i suggest the fire dance program because we're teaching tai chi and we're you know and i'm talking to you and i'm sharing with you and we're visiting every week through the program and then on saturday you can ask any questions that you want to help okay. you in, in my space here in my office is big enough that I can actually demonstrate Tai Chi in my space yeah. and I can clarify stuff for you. Okay. So, so do I cancel the other one? Well, How you do... know, look, I mean, you don't, no, I'm don't, saying ask, don't I just need the, the technicality. Cashing the checks, whether or not you should give them more money. But if, <laughs> if I were you and money was at all a problem, an issue, I would cancel the life writing and, and, and do the fire dance. You could always oh. do both. But that's what I no, no, I don't I don't I barely I barely have done the you get money from me that that is like a gift, basically. Um, I and it. I should let you know, I am friends with um, Brian and Scott. Like I used to work with Scott and I've known them for years. So Fuller. Um, so I've been at their Christmas parties and all that. So, um, so you know so exactly I'm, I'm, what I'm talking about when I say when I talk, speak of who, of who he is. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've known him since 2007. So, Man, yeah. Bro. Yeah, no, just they are just sweet guys, and um, and I have not. I so I'm also on the East Coast, so, so Saturdays sometimes. So that's my other question: is is this recorded that yes. I can go back? Then? Yes, they are all recorded. I have not posted those recordings as faithfully as I should because, like the last six weeks, it's been all I could do to just kind of keep going forward. That's life. Sometimes you're out of balance. Yeah. You know, and then you have to, you know, so now I'm, I'm doing a course correction, but absolutely, I want you to have access to everything. 
but okay. you know, and and that's these talks are free, and then we we will post them. But a couple of them, because I think that we covered some stuff that was really fascinating. I will take that and put it as part of the lecture, you know, okay. the, the paid lecture. But I, that will also be accompanied by by teaching the Tai Chi form. Gotcha. Okay. And then one one final question, right behind your head, I basically recognize what you've got up there. The first word on the top on the left is that syntax. Like, what is that word? Yes. Syntax, belief system. Okay, that is. Okay, yeah. In, in neurolinguistic programming, you the modeling is you find a role model and you look for three things: the way they use their minds, the way they use their emotions, the way they use their body. Their minds right. are mental syntax. Their emotions right. are equate to belief systems, and the body is the use of physiology. Right. To the degree that you that is their recipe for getting their results. To the degree that you understand someone's recipe for getting their results, and you can replicate that. You can bake the same cake it took them 20 years to learn how to make in an afternoon. So that's the thing. When I'm in that room with Brian, I was not just doing all I could to support the project. I was also watching him. How do you do this? Yeah. And I'm going to be honest. I extracted some really interesting things. That is one interesting human being right oh, there. He's a doll. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but his brain is like so big. Um, so if you just said body, because under physicality on the bottom one behind your head, I wrote body. Is that the word? Yes, I picked the right word. All right, good. It's physiology body. I also connect it with the three gates. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it effective? Exactly. I recognize the gates. So I, I recognized all that. So that's I like how I knew what was supposed models. to go there. I yeah. love having models that enable me to look at the same thing from multiple perspectives because the Tao that can be named is not the true Tao. The thing itself is beyond language, but we can dance around it. And I can, if you will let me move your body, you will learn things in relationship to gravity and energy and emotions and so forth that are very useful to communicate some of these things that can't quite be put into words. Other gotcha. than that, all I can do is show up and be authentic. Thank you. I appreciate yes. it. And you are. Awesome. Thank you. To the best of my ability, I swear to God, to the best of my ability. You know, I'm still working at it. All right. So, Kathy Fall. Hi, Steve. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The uh, email you had sent out, which uh, I think was titled Behavior is, is Thought. No, Behavior is Truth. <laughs> yes. uh, there was uh, something in there that I've sort of been in my uh, readings, Buddhist readings and trainings. It's been a struggle for me for a long time. And you talked about the Buddhist monk who takes abuse, uh, verbal abuse. Uh, no, he did as, not take the verbal abuse. Yeah, I understand. As yeah. a gift, he refused to accept. Yes. Uh, by not engaging in it. Um, but, uh, and to pay attention to uh, behaviors and not words. Uh, but I am very sensitive to energies and I find aggressive language has aggressive energy behind it. Yes. Uh, so, um, those are actions for me. And um, because of who I am, not engaging is not always an option because I am followed. In other words, uh, think about it um, uh, metaphorically, someone who attempts to assault and I walk away will keep coming. They will keep tracking me. They will keep following. They will do what they can and you have to, to keep going. They will have to be stopped in some way. Yeah. I have to find a method to yes. um, disengage them from me. Rather than yes. me engaging with them, I need to disengage them from me. So it is it is a long, and I don't know if you were gonna talk about it today. So if you were, I, I'm, I'm gonna do, here's, here's what I do, sweetheart. I put those things out and I wait for somebody like you to I, say that it would be useful for me to talk about it. So now- I'm here, it would be useful for me to talk opinion. about that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so um, whew, being a martial artist, for most of my life, from all of my life at this point, I have put put maybe thousands of hours into thinking about under what circumstances would I be willing to hit somebody? Under what circumstances would I be willing to use this technique? And in a real situation, the truth is that any physical confrontation can become lethal. That therefore, the, the principle in the martial arts is um, the most powerful position in martial arts is I'm ready to die and I'm ready to take you with me. Okay. And so what you never do is you don't fight over anything you're not willing to die for. Mm -hmm. So let's take that. In general, then, actions without words can kill you. Words without actions are harmless on this level. On the other hand, we were all children, all dependent upon adults 
all easy to scare because we didn't even understand where our resources came from. So there is within us a small, and if you had any insecurity in your childhood, a child that is afraid of words and tones and body language and facial expressions, even if the person never takes a step towards us because it triggers our memory of helplessness. Even after the stronger you are, you get to the point where their words cannot harm you, but let's say you have a following and you know that people are looking at what you say and looking and, and they are reacting and you have to create a safe space for your tribe. So you need to have a way to form that tribe in as healthy a way as possible. You are mother, you are den mother for your tribe let's say, and that means mommy lion. Mommy lion will keep guard so that the cubs can play safely. That means that you are accurate if you are saying, this person is gonna keep coming after me. I have to deal with this. You know, so for me, on my Facebook page, for instance, I have over 5,000 followers and, you know, 5,000 friends and, and on and on. So I know that there are people who will come after me. Some of them, let's say, are racists or sexists, okay? And what they want is a chance to spread their poison on my page to my fans. They cannot. So I have developed some ways of determining whether or not a person can be trusted with my tribe. So I don't know the exact content of what you're doing. What I do know is that you need to think back over all these things and start deciding what were the earliest clues that this person was going to go off the rails. They will usually, if you look back over 10, 15, 20 times that things went wrong, you'll notice that you got clues before it got there. Absolutely. This person said things. They were snide in a particular way. They ignored the things that you said. They, they were making jokes about unpleasant things. And you saw how, how the beginning of this developed and developed and developed until it became a full-blown monster. The point is to kill the monster while it's small. You kill it while it's a lizard. You don't wait for Godzilla to start stomping Tokyo. And it's your space, and you err on the side of caution in terms of protecting your people. You can delete people. You can block people. But part of what you're doing is you think this stuff through because your, your fans, your tribes are watching you. And they're saying to themselves, how is she going to deal with this guy, with this woman? I'm dealing with somebody just like that at work. I'm dealing with someone just like that in my life. What can I do? One of the things that I do is I insist that people follow the three gates. Is it true? Is it kind? Is it useful? And because I can point to great philosophers who have supported those things, that gives me the leverage I need to say, I don't believe that that line of discourse um, is is a positive thing in this context you know perhaps and if you cannot if you cannot adhere to the three gates perhaps you'd like to find another context i don't have to insult them i try very hard to never insult people but there are times that it is unavoidable if you don't if if you don't think i understand that you're not factoring in those that lifetime of martial arts training that, no i know you do that um, i, I Go ahead, please. Let me just say that the um, the scared little girl uh, that I protect, uh, just like you're a scared little boy, um, I lived long enough that I that's not necessarily the factor. I'm at the I won't put up with it anymore. I'm at the block and delete stage. Yes. And I have purged, you know, people in my immediate vicinity. I also have a community that um, that I have to deal with that in terms of protecting them. I've been using T and K in all my trainings, all my teachings, whenever I teach. As a matter of fact, it's the first thing that I open my classes to. 
And the in, in necessary, is it necessary? I talk about communication a lot. Not only is it necessary to say, is it necessary for you to say it? Absolutely. And is, you, is it necessary for you to say it right now? Right now. Right at now, this that moment. That is one of the lessons I talked about. I never know exactly what I'm going to talk about this, but one of the things I, I, I said, we're going to talk about the three biggest lessons I learned in that room. And one of them is that thing about, is it useful? It's useful if it comes from the right person at the right time. Uh, yeah. So, so what you need is, it seems to me that what you need is to know it is not just your right, but your responsibility to protect your people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, no, it was, it was really the phrasing of it around the words themselves, you know, for adults, they, they, they shouldn't hurt you anymore. And, and that's what I was responding to because the aggression behind the words are painful, but more importantly, I don't believe I'm required to put up with it. You're absolutely no, no, you're required necessary. to keep your space safe. Exactly. And that's all that, that was the only hurt, My guess is there are hurt people who come to you. Yes. And, and, and they need a safety. Lot of them. So bring out the mommy tiger. So I ask you of yes. all of the women, and I'm gonna go with women just for just for this this just for the sake of this question, who you know and admire, which one would be the one who would absolutely handle this shit perfectly? Who is that? Um, it's it's probably sis from history who would say, "Live free or die." There you go. So what I want you to do is start bringing her into your morning ritual. When you say when you do the the mentor part, you know, and for me it would be like, "I am so grateful for whoever that Maya Angelou, you know, whatever whatever it is, you know, Harriet Tubman. I am so grateful." I would, See that powerful woman standing there with her pistol saying, you shall not pass. Okay, I would see that, I would feel that, and I would let her guide me. I would move like, how would Harriet Tubman do Tai Chi? What is she uh, she's thinking about? I'm taking care of my body so I can kill somebody if they mess with me, freeing my people. You do not- and it, was mo it was mostly that, like, come with us, we're going to be free, but we're not gonna leave you here to tell Massa where we're going. That's right. So come with or drop where you're standing. There you go. There you go. And K Kathy, that part of you will save lives. That part of you, there are women and, and men particularly who, have, who cannot touch that part of themselves, who were terrified to touch that part of themselves, who were told that they would be hurt if they ever touched that part of themselves. But if you will stand up there and not let somebody change you with their venom they will try to hit at you they will try to curse at you they will try to change you you be you I'm but part of who you are is strong enough to deal with all of that without changing who you are without changing who you are at all you figure you have paid a price to be who you are in life this is who you are it's forward or drop where you stand Absolutely. Thank you, Steve. You got it. I will be here for you. Yeah, I love, I love that. Phyllis Baldwin. Unmute yourself. Hello. Good afternoon. This is my first time here. I have not seen any of your other programs. I just, I was doing something this morning. I had a writer's workshop this morning and I'm cleaning up and I see this email. I signed up for something last year and never really got a chance to take advantage of it. I think it was about attracting the right partner. Yes. But Something I never process. I never did it. Um, so I see this email and I said, what is this? And I drop into this <laughs> and you're talking about Tai Chi and defending yourself. And I heard something about writing and something about a fire dance. I don't know. Uh, Fire dance is a way of bringing your body, your mind, and your emotions together. In terms of relationships, let's relate it directly to that. What our process, the, the soulmate process, simply put is you design your perfect partner. You oh. design what you just write a list. What exactly do you want? If you knew that God was going to produce that, 
What would it be exactly? And I'm talking about who they are physically, who they are in terms of their finances, and who they are in terms of their emotional health. For Do not compromise. This is not about what do you think you can afford or what do you think is out there. What you do is you, you design that. Then you ask yourself the question that people don't ask. And that question is, what kind of person does that man or woman want? What is the equal of that man or woman that is in my heart? Because the equal of the person who you decide that you think, this is what I, my heart yearns for. This is what I would love. This would fill my passions. This would fill my heart. This would be the friend to walk beside me. The person who can partner with that person, that's who you really wanted to be when you started out life. That's who you really want to be that you don't necessarily admit to yourself because you don't feel like you can have it. Once you see who you really want to be, then all you have to do is find, figure out what would it take to get there? You know, is this something I would want to be? You know, you to look at that. Is that that strong, beautiful woman someone who I would want to be, someone I would want my children to admire, to grow up to be? If it's something that is honorable and something that is healthy, then you can say, and what are the daily steps that I would take to be a person like that? And you begin to close, you just, every day you take one step in that direction. Now, let me back up for a second. Where you have to start with is loving yourself. You start by loving yourself. That is the first step we have to take is to love mm -hmm. ourselves. Because mm -hmm. if there's a big gap between you and the person that you'd need to be in order to get the person that you want, and it, it's not about it finding an individual. It's not gonna be the individual. It is to be a member of the tribe that is vibrating at that frequency, okay? If, if you love yourself and you see the gap between where you are and what you'd need to be, you'll be able to laugh. It's like, you you know, you have done the best you could with the, re with the resource you've had your entire life. All you're doing now is gain gaining some clarity. So if you don't love yourself and you look at that gap and say, oh God, I'm bad, I'm wrong, I'll never have it. But if you love yourself, it's like looking at a child who is trying to learn how to walk and they fall down. You have faith that that child's gonna learn how to walk. So the child, falls down and looks at you, you know, to find out how it's supposed to feel about having fallen down. And if you say, good baby, good baby, the kid will laugh. We'll understand. We understand at that point in our lives that the steps we take, some, we sometimes stumble. So what? You get back up, brush yourself off, keep trying. If you love yourself, you forgive yourself for not being perfect. You see your beauty and you say, my God, how did I survive all that life threw at me and still have a heart as, as open and wonderful and warm as this? And you, you kiss your own wounds. You love your own scars. They're part of who you are. And in the process of doing that, what will happen is you will be so focused on being and doing what you need to be and do every day to live a life of joy and service that you won't notice that you do or do not have a partner, but you will simultaneously be radiating the energy that will attract a person who is on the same level you are, traveling towards the same mountain at the okay. same pace with equal oh. wounds, advantages and disadvantages. And because you love yourself, you will love them. If you okay. do not love the kinds of people who are being attracted to you right now, that just shows you the work that you need to do. It's as simple as that. To either mm -hmm. love yourself more, you know, either raise your game or lower your standards. We don't want you to lower your standards or raise your game. Um, what I've been doing is there was a time when I did make a laundry list, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I forgot to add one important ingredient, which was the person's age. And I got everything that I wanted, but he was too young, 10, 15 years younger. And he was behaving in a way that a, a more mature person, you know, would have was out of character for the person that I wanted. And I said, what are you doing in my life? And 
it hit me that I got everything that I asked for, but I forgot to mention age. So what I'm doing now is just giving thanks for the perfect person for me, not the perfect human being, but the perfect balance for me. Attracting the right person with the right values, the right sensitivities, the interests, and I don't make the list anymore. I say in divine order, and I'm leaving it up to the universe to make that match for me. And I'm continuing to be open and receptive that when he comes, he'll see me and I'll see him and we will recognize our qualities. The luckiest people in the world. Sorry? The luckiest people in the world are the ones who can just zen their way to what they want. They just mm -hmm. they just trust the universe. Those are the luckiest ones. The rest of us have to make plans. So if <laughs> that works for you, God bless you. Share your secret with the rest of us. Let us know how it works. But well, it's, there, there's I'm nothing the wrong with making another list and okay. just being just being clear. There's this thing in our brains called the reticular activating mechanism, and what it does is. That you know, if you buy a new dress, suddenly you start seeing other people wearing that dress. You get a new car, suddenly you start seeing that car everywhere. If you have clarity on what you want in life, you will start seeing the things that will help you get that thing. So, so it that I can help help you with. Other than that, you know, it's just you know, if connecting to the divine is your way, then blessings in your path, and I wish you all the luck in the world. Okay, we'll see how that works out. We'll see um, how it works. I We'd love to have you in the program, but what I really want is for you to be happy. Thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm not complaining now. I'm eternally okay. grateful for where I am in my life and what is happening. Wonderful things are happening. That's beautiful. I mean, that's I, you know, so. But I'm that's also eighty percent of it. Yes, yes, and it's not about somebody coming in to complete me. Right. Well, that's the it, other thing is that you have to. Be Please. You know what I mean? That I'm that I'm empty and that I have to have this person to come and fit into this puzzle piece. No, no, no. This is going to be a balance. See, I would and, look at that as you're a lioness and you want a lion. Hello. Or if or the other way is if you want a lion, you gotta be a lioness. And so okay. you use that, you love yourself enough to ask yourself the hard questions. How mm -hmm. am I not manifesting my full power and beauty in the Mm. Okay. okay. So that's, you know, that, that question assumes that you got it. You just have to learn how to let it shine. Okay? Realize, yeah. How to make it happen. That's but right. this other issue that just came up of somebody being aggressive and assertive, I have a homeless woman trying to set up housekeeping in my car and it's been going on for three months. And I've been reading, um, I read Louise Hay's book years ago and I got it again and I'm looking at forgiveness and, you know, not wanting to kill people, but um, she left me in my car. You have to set boundaries. You do have to set boundaries. You may decide to include her within your circle, but if you don't want her in your circle, then you're going to have to take actions. I okay. have. Okay. I, okay. We'll Thank you very it. much, Phyllis. Thank you so much. I'm yes. glad to be here. My very great pleasure, Phyllis. Uh, before we go to on to the next one, uh, Tanana Reeve, do you have anything you'd like to add about what we've been talking about? Is my baby there? Sorry about that. <laughs> my phone was ringing at the same time you were calling me. Let me try to find my face so I can have the spotlight. Here I am. So, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, build up. Um, I'm just happy to see the new faces it's, uh, and some old faces, you know, uh, by old, I mean, um, you know, you've been here before. None of us, <laughs> we're not old here. We're just experienced and wise. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm 21 four times. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> three, three times. Something like that. Oh, whoa, not four times. Heck no. <laughs> but, um, although there would be nothing wrong with that either. There would be nothing wrong with that. I mean, look, that would be pretty amazing, actually, considering everything. Uh, just in case there are people here from my list, um, I just, yeah, no math, no math here. I I also kind of um, 
mirrored Steve's email on things that we learned in this great experience with, with Brian in the room and, you know, the importance of mastermind groups and um, being able to shrug off rejection, super, super important. I mean, all writers have to do that, but it's, it's a, a like warp drive in the writer's room because you're rejected over and over and over and over and over all day long. And then maybe one idea or two, if you're lucky, like two ideas might get through all day. <laughs> you know. So to be able to take the rejection, let go of the path that your suggestion would have taken the, the project in, realize that's not the same project and start seeing the project everyone else is talking about. It was a uh, it was interesting to learn how to pivot that way, and also, and I'm sure Steve would love to jump in on this: the importance of having that morning routine to keep our physical and emotional energy high was Absolutely. so so critical. Like I probably would have forgotten to call my dad entirely these past six weeks, except that I had it programmed in my mornings you know that for this period of time i'm calling somebody it's my dad my aunt. i would try to say <laughs> no matter how busy you are one hour out of your day belongs to you and yeah, if you don't so... have an hour make sure you've got that 10 to 20 minutes for the ritual and if you don't have that then you have your five minute miracle you you know you breathe for 60 seconds once every three hours um and everyone has that much time uh, yeah. if you don't believe you have that much time I respectfully suggest that you're not being honest with yourself, that that's where it starts by by demanding five minutes out of every day be yours, then you leverage that to 10 to 20 minutes for a full fire dance. And then that to a diamond hour 60 minutes where you are giving yourself positive input and you're taking care of all your minimum stuff writing that, you know, minimum one line doing some, you know, five Tibetans, you know, whatever you're doing, whatever that minimum is that keeps you going. I don't know if this is related, but Clarissa's hand is up. So I kind of wanted to see what Clarissa wanted to ask about. Clarissa. Unmute. Oh, hold on. Unmute. The hard stuff. I thought there was no math. <laughs> okay. Um, I really just had like um, kind of a update from when we did goals. And we did we remember how we submitted goals to Tanana Reeve and Steve. So um I missed last Saturday because I was finally 40 men 40 meters under the ocean. I finally went scuba diving. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. Um, again, yeah, I I went uh I started, I got certified before COVID, but then one of the things that kind of um I lost it. I lost it. And I got it back last week in Nassau, Bahamas. So I wasn't here because of that. And well, I, I can't. I can't think of a better reason. <laughs> Beautiful. Bring, bring that energy. You know, what, think about what you learned about yourself. You know, it, the process of getting there, the process of doing it. Share that with yeah. us. So you can tell us what was the single most important thing that came out of it. And I love that question because I remember sitting on the boat um, and we were going out to the dive to the to the reef and I was sitting there with um, there were a few younger much younger than me snorkelers and then there were some other divers and I grew up in a family full of people who were scared of the water and who could not swim and um it and just in that listening to what you were saying earlier steve um and you know Tamana reba said this before too where she said that i know that i can learn how to do a new thing you know whatever the new thing is whether it's moving from journalism to podcasting to writing being a script writer whatever the new thing is i can learn the new thing and develop mastery in it. you say that here all the time that's right so i started thinking about like i'm not the worst diver on this boat you know I mean, <laughs> i'm not the best but i've i've you know i've managed to go from a family scared of the movie jaws to membership in this new space where like you know um my stripes mean something on this boat right so um and it was beautiful it was a great dive and i was not afraid um it was funny to me um, that I was talking to somebody the week before and like kind of real estate is new to me. And, and I made a comment to him and he said, wow, you, 
you you're you're not afraid to dive with sharks, but you're scared to close a real estate deal. And I thought about that and I was like, okay, yet another area where I need some membership. You know, I need to work on my membership in this new area. Because if it's new, um, fear is the opener for me, right? So- um, Go yeah. back to that. Yes. What, what does that mean? Fear is the opener for me. Somebody put that in chat because I want Clarissa to, to, to dive a little deeper into that. What does that mean? Um, to me, um, my my immediate, the, what centers in my mind if for a new endeavor for me, fear is what's showing up first. You know, um, fear of, because I know in the, in, the, in the areas that I circulate in the most, I have expertise. So when I am no longer the expert, um, fear shows up. That's how I respond to it, you know? And okay, so, so fear happens when you do not have enough knowledge to claim expertise. Right. Okay, so yeah. fear is a signal that you need to learn. But yes, it's a, that's a great way of putting it. And it's also something I need to watch out for because what happens for me is paralysis. I won't take action. Okay, so I'll you react action. to fear sometimes with paralysis. Yes. How do you get yourself out of paralysis? Because you have accomplished many things. So fear, you know, you 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 see a task that you have not mastered. You have fear. Fear leads to paralysis. What gets you through the paralysis? Well, it's it's something that you've been talking about. Um, I think it was I, I believe it was it's kind of like Kathy's conversation with you. Um, you know, there are a couple of things. I immerse myself in places like this where a different thing is being spoken over me, you know? So in, for example, the real estate um, example, I'm in a room with people who have normalized this. They do real estate deals all day. It may be a new a new thing for me, but they're talking about it just like they're, or they're talking about lunch, you know? Okay, or, so, so yeah. let, me, let me try this. One tool that you use to get the, okay, feet, challenge creates fear which creates paralysis and the way that clarissa gets through paralysis is to put herself in the presence of people who have mastered the thing right. and who vibrate at their frequency yes so, so i am borrowing yes. from you and to nana reeve when i come in <laughs> excellent excellent we're here for you that's that's perfect great so, so role yeah. models to tana reeve were you about to say something sweetheart i just say great yes it is great it is great because think about it the life writing process, the, the fire dance process specifically is about mentors and about creating mastermind groups. And part of mastermind groups is the sort of the tuning fork effect. My energy has to be at a particular level in order to do these workshops. In terms of you absorbing what's happening in this workshop, you actually begin to vibrate at my frequency. So I have to be very intentional about this, you know, to bring you my best every week so that you, because one of these days I may be calling you and saying, listen, I'm a little bit down. Would you, you know, give me a little bit of energy? I, mean, I, I do that to people sometimes, but, but people who are experts in different fields vibrate. They, they're like tuning forks. They're different. Being in the presence of a masterful writer or martial artist or salesperson or teacher, you will start picking up there's stuff, and this is one of the reasons why, you know, you have to be very careful with your associations because the wrong associations will drag you down. The right associations will lift you straight up. And all I ask from you is that as you make these associations, understand that you have the responsibility of turning around and offering your energy to others as others mm -hmm. offer theirs to you. That's all I'm doing here. I'm thinking about Steve Muhammad and Larry Niven and Octavia Butler and all the people who yeah. believed in me and gave, let me have the honor of being in their presence so that I could figure out what, how do you think? How do you feel? How do you do this? Um, if there is any way more powerful and then when you're doing that first of all you're going to do it unconsciously unconscious oh competence God. are this is what we're evolved to do it's how children learn but you can consciously think yourself what are their belief systems about this thing about real estate what do they believe about real estate how do they feel about it what are the actions that they take 
between the feelings, strategies, and actions, that's their recipe. So you not only can be around them and just sort of groove to them and vibrate with them, but you can consciously, you can get good at this. You can, you know, actually watch. I watched, I was, oh God, am I going to say this out loud? Yes, I'm going to say it out loud. I was trained in aura perception. And whether it's what I call a complex equivalent, whether my brain is creating a, uh, a model of visuals that I can use to understand a bunch of complex data or whether there's a, an actual phenomenon there, that's off the table. We're not even going to discuss that right now. I'm perfectly aware of the conversations. But I see them. I want to see into the matrix of their energy. How do they breathe? Literally just breathing with them. You're talking to somebody, match their breathing. Match their body language. Start using their own verbal predicates. They talk about, you know, do they talk about seeing something, feeling it, or hearing it? Start matching that stuff. Match their breathing, match their posture, match this, and you will begin to interact with the universe the way they do. You will start seeing the world the way they do. And literally, in a, in a day with somebody who can who has mastered something that you do not understand, you can, if you do this properly you can pick up enough to just rocket yourself it's just it's absolutely but but your answer was perfect oh. <laughs> well i just wanted to say thank you because i love the way you had us do goals with exactly the way that you just just did that like it's not just like a dreamy floaty list like you know like a um what do you call it new year's resolution you were like putting up put numbers to it you did these timelines and actionable you know and so it was a couple of things i i wanted to connect with a sorority sister who lives in the bahamas and that those relationships have been difficult for me as well as get back into diving and both of those things worked out beautifully and um and i'm just grateful i thank you for creating this community where i get to absorb but i did have a question for tanana reeve about something that she just said and um you you were talking about um in the in the writer's room where you might you might get give out eight ideas and um it's not until the eighth one that somebody runs with it or does or it's even heard so like for me i'm a meritocracy person you know i have been in the past like you know i feel good when you tell me good job <laughs> you know <laughs> we're gonna run the club with this idea <laughs> and that's a good day for me but when you you know when you're adulting in like a place like the writer's room you have to have a new system of success right it can't just be oh tanana reed gave us an idea and we think it's amazing and that's a good day so if it's if you're in a space where eight ideas may be shot down but you you're needed but you're but you're valuable to the room how are you developing a new system of success if or a system of success in a room where that is the normal to just like there's it's a high stakes room everybody can't be brilliant and everybody can't want a pat on the back i love pats on the back so uh, t, t you're muted what was interesting is how much even the number two a very very talented man named jim gray was also so receptive to praise even from lower level staff writers who have no say like oh you like that idea you know that kind of puppy dog energy so that doesn't always go away and that was one of the things i found the most endearing about him and also gave me permission to be like sort of like stunned <laughs> If like there was one day I had made a pitch the day before, pretty impassioned pitch and crickets like you, you don't. So and, and to go back to the beginning, like in the beginning, I was lucky if I was talking about the right topic, like in the beginning. <laughs> so here's what a loss feels like. Crickets is not a loss. Crickets is just basically eh, it didn't really hit for anybody. Nobody's going to say anything about it. A loss is when Brian, the showrunner, has to say, oh, we just talked about that in the last scene. Oh, his name's <laughs> A loss is when you're actually not just not contributing to the momentum in the room, but you're pulling the momentum backward while someone explains to you that we just talked about this. So, so that's <laughs> right. So that's where, that's what a bad, that's like, 
no one would say it. And he was super sweet about it every single time, super patient every single time. So I was just excited if I wasn't getting that, you know, like if I said it, if I get crickets, then okay, crickets work. But mm-hmm. if if I if I'm actually stopping momentum, that's terrible. And the best days are when something that didn't land maybe the previous day, the number two brings up, or showrunner brings up the next day. Says I want to go like this happened last week. I want to go back to Tanana Reeves pitch about rage. That's like the first thing he said, and I was like, huh, what? <laughs> I said something. I had a pitch. So anyway. Yeah, so it's not just the right idea. It's the right idea at the right time coming from the right person. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, you have to define victory for yourself. Victory for me is being present, is being supportive of other people. If If I come up with an idea, I wait for the right time. And I say it when somebody else, you know, somebody else says something. And then I can say, yes, and and add that it's like you don't otherwise the, the ship will go in a circle you know it's the 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 showrunner has decided what port we're heading to it's our job to rig the sails to help them get there you know it is not our job to decide that we should have another destination just not our job you know if, if we're good at this part of the job maybe one day we'll be in the captain's chair right now seaman first class is good enough for me <laughs> and yo ho, you know. <laughs> I love hearing the two of you talk about this because that's exactly what I hear. Like how much humility, and because you're big, they're big people sitting at this table. I yeah. can tell, like really successful, you yes. know, and monsters in the. Everybody at that table, for all practical then, purposes, the everybody humility. at that table was an expert. Yeah. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Great. And we, I am going down to San Diego to see my beautiful daughter. Today, I'm going to take her to go see Creed. Uh, it's her birthday is coming up. So I have to close this this early. If there's a final comment, question, or anything from anybody, please, this is the time to ask the question. Because <laughs> otherwise, what I need to do is to get on the road. Uh, I've already seen Creed, loved it. But I just, you know, t- t- Nikki doesn't go to movies by herself. So <laughs> it's just my, and I love it. I'll drive two hours to see my daughter anytime. Just, so listen. If you have any comments, questions, or requests, please let me know. Otherwise, please, you know, do your morning ritual. Get into the Fire Dance program um, that www.firedancetaichi.com. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. www.firedancetaichi.com. And join the program. If you're in it for a month and you don't like it, happily refund your money. Just delighted to refund your money. Be here next Saturday. Every week we're here. Bring bring your mm-hmm. notions, your ideas, your thoughts, your experiences here. Share it with the group. Share on Facebook. You know, share on Kajabi. You know, on, on the site. And any any final words, Tanana Reef? No. Nope. Just everybody have a great weekend. Take care, everybody. We're gonna go hit the road. Take Good. care. Thank Save you all. Namaste. Say goodbye. Thank you all for being here. Bye, everybody. Have a good time, you guys. You bet. Bye-bye. Safe safe travels, everyone. (laughs) Wow. Indeed.